Something else you needed? I should keep moving. Yeah. Tracks. Maybe Aaron's and the Vanguard's. These bristlebacks are everywhere. Sounds like someone's putting up a fight. Another one down! Now this! This is what I was forced for. No ledgers to fill. <laughs> no... Boring mid afternoon patrols. Just a hammer. Just the fight. Aloy? Aaron! Handle the rest. I thought I could drop those logs on the machines. If I can get them under. Those bristlebacks have acid canisters on their backs. It should trigger a chain reaction if I hit them with acid arrows. Me in my best, as usual. Well, you did the hard part. I just took care of the stragglers. How bad is it? Uh, this? Ah, who needs ribs, huh? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm good. I'm good. Huh. Okay, well, I, I know you didn't come all the way to the Daunt just to watch me get wrecked. So, what's the story? I need the embassy to happen so I can head west. Erend, what I did at the Spire, what we did, it didn't end the threat. It just slowed it down. There's still more to do. Really? <laughs> well, that's great. I, I mean, yeah, not the threat's not over part. That's not so great. But, but hey, what? whatever you're up against, your spear, my hammer, just like old times. Aaron, I need the embassy now. I can't wait for you to heal. A couple of days rest, if that. Actually, even if you weren't hurt, 
What I have to do, it's... It's better if I do it alone. Alone? <laughs> now that figures. Oh, Aaron! I hate to interrupt the romance, but I'm pretty banged up here. I don't blow your blaze, I'm coming. Oh, this just keeps getting better. Huh. Listen, I'll go to Baron Light, get patched up. If you want this embassy to happen, we're gonna need this sun priest, Studius Wadis. Oh, I know him. I'll clear the Valley of Bristlebacks, then send Wadis to Baron Light. I'll catch up with you there. Well, I guess that's sort of like a goodbye. I'm sorry? You? Sorry? <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be a first. Where is this coming from? Hey, just, you know, forget it, yeah. Oh, it's nothing. It sounds like something. All right, fine. Now, after the battle at the Spire, you, you took off, you left without so much as a handshake. I mean, people like me, we fought and bled at your side, Aloy, and you just, or you just disappear? What kind of person does that? Sorry it wasn't easy for you when I left. And I know it's not easy now, but what I've been doing. Life on Earth is in danger. And only I can save it. Your life on Earth? Yeah. Everything dies unless I succeed. Well, then let me help. Oh. You can't. There's no machine to fight, no bad guy to kill. What I've got to do, I. I can't even explain it. Not even to people I care about. Oh, so much for being useful. Okay. Aaron! By the forge. I guess that's my cue. Maybe I should go with you to Baron Light. No, no, hey, you're needed elsewhere. Obviously. We'll make it without you. I think I've cleared out most of the bristlebacks. Chain scrape can get back to work now. I'll go give Olvind the good news. Vladis too. Then maybe this embassy can finally happen.
Welcome, Time to get Elven to blow the whistle, then Voidis to Baron Light. Still here, I see. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the magistrate. Well, when my intim how noble of you. Noble. Ha Nobody had everything. I and where the uh, the Karja risk. Someone had to. I cleared out all the bristlebacks. Oh, you did. Now that you've recovered from your shock, time to blow the whistle. Oh, there, not so fast. I'll have to send someone out to confirm the kills. Make sure the valley is safe again. It shouldn't take more than a day or two. <sighs> no, you blow the whistle now. These are innocent Osram lives we're talking about here. Surely the delay- Either you do it now or I will. Ah, I knew you could do it. Friends, gather around. The savior of Meridian has done now it again. What? The bristlebacks are defeated. You. What? Sound the whistle. Chain scrape is open for business. Terrific. Yay. And Olvind has agreed to personally pay every worker their lost wages. Yeah. That's where I like it. Yeah. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Yeah! Don't you have an embassy to get to? Yeah. I guess I do. Well, the chain scrapes back to work. Merchants should be open to trade. See if they have anything useful before I send Wadis off to Baron Light. Armor is my trade. I bet you've got good stories to tell. I was just, mm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set, a Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. Let's start off simple. The Tanakh like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. 
I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece club when perform. You'll be testing your ma a machine's combat and its own attack power. This and your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. That's about it for your turn then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine. But sometimes that can be a good thing. Overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time, and I'll show you what I mean. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it?
Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget. These are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor. Though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. You know, I've lost my fair share of pieces after a <laughs> night of machine hunting or brew hopping. <sighs> no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can... Knowing when in terrain mainly, as you know, when you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack my machine. Now let's take a look at your machine. Combat power is the sum of and the value of the terrain. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. There you go. Now, Choosing the right terrain doesn't just... It can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's standing on grassland terrain. This terrain has a value of zero. This means your machine's combat power adds up to two points. My machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position but they have the higher ground. They're standing on forest terrain, which is worth one point. This means my combat power adds up to one point. Now, the front of my machine is colored blue. This means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it, which means my machine gets an extra point, giving it a total of two combat power points. If we compare the combat power of both machines, you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage. Whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power, you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead. Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want to show you.
All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more. However, there are two other terrains that work a little different. This is what we call a chasm. Oh, but it'll take away two combat points if you do. This is marsh terrain. Landing on it will take away. It'll also keep your machine. Here, let me show you. See? All you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again. Or you can overcharge. You can still attack it. Well, I promise it'll all. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players will choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponents. In other words, its machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a, this means though, let's move that so we can take. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram-type machine. Attack an enemy with it, and it'll push the piece backwards. Like this. See, now my machine has taken over your machine spot on the board. This is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground. Looks like we have one more piece to look at. Now this is a beauty of a piece, a dash type machine. When it attacks, it'll move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path, including your own. So make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races. You should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to attack at all. Here, I'll show you. Look, it even rotated your piece. A nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your... If you look at you, you'll notice this. There's quite a few of... But I'm pretty sure it's got... I think that... A you know where to find me, Red. Come back and I'll show you my wares once again. What do you think you fixed this lucky camera of mine? The way to Baron Light is clear. Get moving. You're not Aaron Vanguardsman. 
I will move only when the captain when said... I cleared out all the bristlebacks, which I have. Captain's orders. So they're okay? Banged up, but breathing. And waiting up ahead for you. But... but I, I was supposed to have three escorts. I'm off to Baron Lightwadis. Like Aloy said, Captain's orders. You can stay here. Abandoned to the riffraff? I think not. Guess you're coming with me then. See you there, Aloy. Done. The embassy can finally get underway. If I can get through it, I'll be able to track down. I could head straight for Baron Light. Or poke around the dawn some more first. And maybe take Petra up on that drink. Come for that beer after all, eh? Here, sit down. Get a pint in her hand. Wasn't expecting you to swing by. Since when do I do what's expected? Ha! There's that spark. Fire and spit. Uh, fire and spit. <sighs> That's a blast from the bellows. Won't fix the forge, but at least I can forget about my troubles for a while. Like what? Well, things aren't as bad since you got this place running again. But we still got Olven grating the gears about his concession decree. If you don't put that down, I'll come over there and show you how that game ends. Anyway, right now, I'm just worried about those refugees out from Sunfall. To come all this way, enduring forge knows what. How I saw. They won't let anyone up the old trailhead southwest of here. And therein lies the problem. A stormbird crashed up on the cliffs last week, and Tallinn Cleanbrokers had his eye on the salvage ever since. But the refugees have barred entrance. Mustn't interrupt their sun-scorched ritual. Something about finding a twilight path. Huh. I never heard them talk about that before. Yeah, well, these particular Shadow Karja are an odd bunch. But overall, they're peaceful folk. Not that it matters to Tallinn. He'll crack some heads to get to that salvage. 
Maybe you could swing by, convince him to set up camp somewhere else? I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back, but realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's gotta be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. What else can you tell me about the Shadow Carja refugees? Well, they don't call themselves Shadow Carja for one. At least, not anymore. They're some other brand of sun crazed. But whatever side of the sun they're on, they're peaceful through and through. Don't seem to want for nothing except a place to live, pray, and just enough food to keep from starving. So they're just camped outside by a trail, blocking entry to a wrecked Stormbird, waiting for... what, exactly? Don't rightly know, but I'll tell you this. Should they ever wise up and salvage it, a Stormbird heart is worth a lot. And if they get there first, then by Ostrom Law, it's theirs. Not that Tolan Cleanbroker has ever lost sleep over any law-breaking. I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back. But realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's gotta be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. Who is this Tolland clean broker? Just some chuff huffing pawnsman. Got a shop here in town. Lived in chain scrape since there was a chain scrape. He and Alvin go back a ways. Like a pair of coals and a campfire, those two. So Tolland works for Alvin? Ha! <laughs> Alvin might think so. But Tolland scrapes up his own scams. And he ain't the type to let a few refugees get between him and Stormbird salvage. So about Olvind. Around here, everything's about Olvind. How'd he end up in charge? He got here early, like a squirrel smelling a fat nut. He knew rebuilding barren light would need stone and timber. So he jangled purses all over Mainspring, getting investors to front claims on anything in the Daunt that might be worth a damn. Thing is, all the bankers back home know that this is Karja land, and the Sun King can revoke those claims at any time. That's why he's desperate for the Magistrate to sign off on a concession decree. So the Bristlebacks in the Daunt. <sighs> You're a pig. Blasted things, those Bristlebacks. They just showed up one day, rampaging around the valley like they exploded out of a forge. Lost some good people. But bless the bellows, you cleared them out and got this place working again. That put a dent in Olvin's plans. Now, if only there were some way to smash them all together and run them out of town. But how could Bristlebacks and the Daunt help Olvind? Two words. Concession decree. Since no one knows where the Bristlebacks came from, Olvind has taken to blaming the Karja for him. He's hoping to dig up enough old resentments to get a strike going until the concession's signed. This is just his latest attempt. He's been trying to rile up the workers since the day he rolled into town. About that. I think the Bristlebacks came out of Olvin's old mine. <gasps> now there's a spark that could light a fire. Can you prove it? I'm working on it. By the forge. Grab my ear if you nail it down. Well, if I'm up that way, I'll talk to the refugees. Try to convince them to move. Much appreciated. They have it rough. Don't need Tallinn making it rougher. Petra said Tallinn has a shop here in Chainscrape. I could have a word with him first. <coughs> it's a Tanakh game, but any tribe can enjoy it. 